Hello everyone again. Um, uh, the other day, uh, or just recently, if you if you look at my videos, um, I done a video uh, called uh, Pri "Prison Tattooist uh, Loses uh, His Parcel." Um, so yeah, this is more on that really, and uh, it involves um, John Irby as well. Because uh, yeah, the the tattooist there, uh, Scotch Bill. Um, he was having a tattoo, tattoo done himself uh, by another guy, uh, a mate of mine from outside as well. Um, he was a mate of mine, uh, he knew people that I knew, and this guy called Peter, Peter Bass, he knew him. His name was Riff. He was like a, a bit of a hippie, you know, like, but he was um, a really, like a biker hippie type, but he was a really good guy, decent guy. As far as I know, he uh, he was living down in Wales and that. I haven't seen him for years. So he was doing this big back piece on um, Scotch Bill's back. But um, as I told you in the other video, Scotch Bill uh, ended up uh, being taken down the seg at Downview and uh, getting transferred out, getting shipped out over... Uh, what happened with uh, this other guy ending up in hospital by giving himself internal injuries and stuff. Um, so yeah, what happened then, uh, one day uh, while he was down the block, because the block in Downview is like outside of Sea Wing, between Sea Wing and the, uh, the Astro Turf football pitch in the gym. Um, and when they have exercise in the, in the seg there, you can actually see them. And they've got a lot of little exercise yard in the seg there. And uh, you can see someone exercising in there, and there's a fence around it, like a little fence. And uh, this time, uh, me and Riff, we've gone over to uh, talk to Scotch Bill at the SEG. Um, and basically what's happened is uh, Scotch Bill has given Riff something. So uh, unbeknown to me, uh, I didn't see what he was giving him, I knew he, he had slipped in something. So we went back to Riff's cell and all of a sudden he said, uh, you got a bit of Jimmy, you got a bit of uh, foil, have you? You know, and he pulled out uh, an eight for brown, an eight for heroin. Yeah, so basically what had happened, Scotch Bill was getting in the parcels for John Irvy. Uh, he was supplying John Irvy's heroin for him while he was in there. Because, uh, I don't know if you know, John Hervey was a bad heroin addict and cocaine addict, you know, and uh, uh, stuff like that, you know. So he, he was basically sorting that out for him, and uh, I think for an eighth, he would have been charging a minimum of 500 quid, which was double the price of what it would have cost outside. You know, uh, we're back in, it's about 93 uh, then and uh, an eighth of heroin then was about 250 quid top whack so yeah it was sort of double bubble basically so yeah he's given a uh, riff scotch bill's given riff this uh thing but uh, you know we're back in the cell now and uh basically he's pulled the gear out and uh we got the foil out and we're having a smoke we're, we're chasing a dragon and uh basically uh he said to me you know uh I've just got this off Scotch Bill. This is Irby's, John Irby's parcel. Yeah, uh, he's paid for it and that, but he's not getting it. And I thought, you know, fair enough. Don't bother me, you know. Uh, he, he was sorting me out, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I was so out of it after that, you know, because uh, it was a um, proper nice bit of gear and that. But uh, what happened after that, uh, Riff kept that, to himself and done whatever he done with it, probably sold it and traded it up, I don't know. But what happened after that, another guy, Johnny Mac from Kingston, Johnny McAvenny, uh, I'm pretty sure he's dead, rest in peace. Uh, he's a Northern Irish guy, uh, doing a four, I think, four years for Armory. Uh, but I sort of knew him from Kingston. Uh, originally he was from Belfast, but I did know him from Kingston outside as well, you know. Uh, so basically what happened, because uh, uh, John Irvy had lost his last parcel, uh, Johnny Mac uh, then took over the job of supplying uh, the, the parcels of heroin for uh, John Hervey, you know, uh, but he got really friendly with him, you know, and uh, Johnny Mac was getting home leaves, I think he, he was on A-Wing for a bit and he was getting days out and all that, uh, you know, um, and I think he even went up to Suffolk 
to uh, Irv his stately home and all that, you know. Uh, so yeah, he was sorting it out for a bit after that. Um, you know, I was still getting sorted out after that. I wasn't involved in the getting it anymore, like I was when it was Scotch Bill and uh, Riff. But um, I was getting sorted out back from John Irvy. So basically, uh, Johnny Mac was getting him his gear, and uh, he'd give it to uh, Hervey, and then Hervey would sort out whoever with it, and. Basically, everyone was on him all the time, you know. I mean, if I, I wanted to get a smoke out of him one time, I, I literally had to drag him, not drag him, but literally say, look, come into the cell, John, into my cell there on C-Wing, and uh, basically shut the door and wedge it up, you know, flip the bolt on the cell door and put, like, a wedge in there so no one could just walk in. Because uh, if people knew you was in there... Uh, wedged up and that, that, you know, they try and get in there to get on the smoke and all that, to, to, to get on the, 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 the brown with you, you know, so, yeah, it was all like that, so, yeah, I was very friendly with him, but uh, as a lot of you might know, uh, he was a homosexual, um, there had been an article in a magazine that was floating around the prison, saying about, uh, there had been an article in the Times back then, where Hervey had uh, been arrested in Morocco, and they found, uh, an 11-year-old uh, boy under his bed, or, or a boy of that age, you know, in Morocco, and I, I, I don't know what happened there, but that, that was a true story, and the magazine was floating around, and everyone was going, oh, he's a sex case, and all this and that, but that was all behind his back, you know, Herbie, I'm not being funny, you couldn't fight or anything like that, do you know what I mean, he was just this skinny upper-class guy, but, uh, you know, people did want to get to know him and all that, you know, but... Um, I'm going to have to do another story on this because there's so much more to this. But, uh, yeah, like I say, that one time uh, he, he was in the cell and I've wedged up the door and all that, you know, just so we, I can get a bit of peace and have a decent smoke. But uh, another time, yeah, like I say, he was a raving homosexual. He wasn't trying to hide it, you know, and I haven't got a problem with that. You know, uh, two consenting adults, um, they can do whatever they want as far as I'm concerned, you know. Um, but like I say, this one, another time, I was walking down from, because in, in Downview, it's a big long wing, sea wing, it's like a big long corridor with the, with the, uh, dining servery hatch in the middle, and then you've got two, uh, cells, you've got the cells at the end of each, of the, of the big long corridor, you know, and, uh, there's the basement at one end for induction, and then you come up to the ones, you know, and then it goes up to the, threes or fours I think it was and then it was the drug free bit on the fours you know and uh, if you went up through there then you could progress to um, uh, B wing and A wing which was like town visits and all that sort of stuff so yeah it was uh, a lot going on there it was a flagship uh, prison at the time for um, uh, the drug free stuff uh, there was like a rehab course there called the ADT course uh, a guy that was running it was a lifer Irish guy uh, called Frankie Quinn, um, I'm sure a lot of you might have heard of him, but uh, yeah, so this time I was talking about, I, I was going from uh, one end of Sea Wing to the other to see uh, this officer, this screw down there called Ray, uh, rest in peace Ray, uh, Ray Egan, uh, my dad knew him, he used to drink in a club where my dad used to uh, go, over in Belmont there, and uh, it was all right, Ray. He would bring me in tobacco and that, you know, but uh, he would open the packets, you know, and put it in an envelope, you know. So, you know, basically, he, he'd let me, uh, he'd bring in a, as much tobacco as I wanted, you know, uh, but he, he, he wouldn't, um, he'd open them. He wouldn't let you, he wasn't stupid. He wasn't going to bring in drugs or anything like that, you know, and he was a good guy. But uh, I say rest in peace because sadly he died of cancer, Um a few years ago so yeah I was going down to see him basically to pick up some tobacco but on the way down there as you go past the uh, the servery hatch in the, the long corridor on sea wing um, there's like uh, this is on like the ones there's like um, a, a bathroom a big bathroom with showers in and that but mainly it's it's like a bathhouse but a small bathhouse and uh, the doors to it are all like glass and that, so you can see right in there. And uh, 
I was walking past there, like I say, and uh, this time John Hervey uh, was in, in the bath, yeah? And um, the door was open to, to, the, to the bathroom and that. And like I just said, there's all glass there. You can see right in there. And he's lying in the bath, completely naked. And the door was open. And as I was walking past, because I was thinking, oh, I want to get a bit of gear off him and that, you know what I mean? I, I really need a smoke and that. I'll see if I can graft a bit of gear out of him. But um, when, when I got there, right, I said, um, all right, John. And he's lying there, stark naked in the bath. And he went, uh, oh, all right, Sean, uh, you're coming in. I went, what? I said, what do you mean am I coming in? He said, what, you're coming in the bath, he said. I went, no, nah, mate, you've got to be joking. Uh, I'm not into that, do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I just sort of shook my head and uh, went and got my tobacco off uh, off um, Ray there, Ray Egan. And uh, after he got out of the bath, uh, I caught up with him afterwards and uh, he did sort me out of smoke. And I mean, he, he just used to get really out of it and talk a lot of shit and that, but we're going to that another time. But um, yeah, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and I've got a lot more coming from not just down view, from high point, uh, high down, uh, Belmarsh, a little bit of Wandsworth, uh, Ashford, uh, Felton. Yeah, I've got like, um, you know, must be 15 years worth of prison stories. But I do want to say I haven't spent 15 years in prison. I think the amount of time I spent in prison was about five years. Literally, I think about five years behind the door. Uh, virtually in one go, I think. I think out of the five years I done, I was outside for about six or seven months. And uh, after that, I went straight from prison to a rehab. And then uh, after the rehab, uh, I was only in the rehab for six weeks and I was back in prison again uh, in uh, 1996. But um, yeah, so um, we're going to that another time. And uh, basically, guys, um, I just want to thank everyone again for uh, all the really nice comments, all the positive comments. And because uh, last year was a really bad year for me, you know, um, I was really sick last year. Uh, people have been saying, what's going on with you, Sean, and the weight loss. And basically what it was, um, I thought I had cancer last year. But uh, it's not that. It, it's just uh, an incident, a non-incidental uh, pancreatic cyst, whatever that is. And um, also erosive duodenitis, which is like um, an ulcer type thing. And I am on uh, medication for that, omeprazole. Yeah, um, uh, while we're on the subject of medication, um, I do suffer bad anxiety and stuff. But uh, I choose not to take medication for that. Uh, you know, um, I think in the long run, medication, like the medication for anxiety that I used to take, like uh, benzodiazepines, like Valium and that, in the long run, it just makes everything worse. Um, but I'm glad I'm all off it now. And I still get bad anxiety, really bad nerves. I've had it all my life. But like I say, I'd rather um, tough it out and not take medication and look for something a bit more natural, you know, um, but there's a lot of people that are choosing that route now. You know, I think people are wise now to the way a lot of these drug companies are going on. You know, basically that uh, a lot of these drug companies are just as bad as drug dealers. You know, so um, yeah, um, there you go. Um, I'm going to leave it here, guys. You know, and uh, I'll be doing another one soon. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye.